how much it costs per month to run my seven-figure Pokemon card business. They all discuss the monthly costs for my online, in-home Pokemon card business. I'll tell you my approximate fixed costs, variable costs, and the costs of my setup slash equipment I use. While these numbers might help you gauge the cost of your potential Pokemon card business, keep in mind my sales numbers, location, and life as a married homeowner all play a huge role in my personal business costs. My fixed costs will be pretty similar to most of you watching, but variable costs will likely be light years different for every business due to the reasons I just listed. For all my costs, I'll give you a quick but thorough explanation of why I pay for them and why you should consider them for your business. That out of the way, we'll start with my fixed costs. Fixed cost number one, my domain. If you wanna have a legitimate business, you need a domain. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. In fact, a domain is the first thing you should get. My domain was free for the first year as it came with my subscription to my website builder Wix, but typically a domain only costs 99 cents for year one and $20 per month to renew. We'll call that $1.66 per month, not so bad. My second fixed cost is my professional email address. As a business owner, you should absolutely get one of these. What sounds better? Info at pokeyenny.com or pokeyenny at gmail.com. Little details like this separate a real business from some schmuck flipping packs from Walmart. My professional email address cost me $12 a month from Google's G Suite, and that includes two terabytes of cloud storage along with some other small perks. There are lesser options from Google's G Suite available at $6 per month, and you can probably find cheaper alternatives elsewhere. Monthly cost running total, $13.66. Setting up a website with payment processing is the next cost. I built my website on Wix, a competitor of Shopify, Squarespace, and probably a few others. Website builders typically allow you to build a site for free, but the free plan doesn't include a custom domain ability or the ability to accept payments. Additionally, there is typically ads for the web builder on the top and bottom banners of your site, not very official. While the lack of payment processing isn't necessary for some industries, such as a service-based business like mowing or photography, it's essentially necessary if you want to sell goods online. Wix Premium starts at $16 a month, and that'll let you make a custom domain and get rid of those banners. But if you want to accept payments, you're looking at $27 a month, and that's pretty similar to its competitors. Monthly cost total, $40.66. A domain, professional email, and payment processing site are the basic essentials to run an online business. But I also pay for a couple services to make things easier and to market and build credibility. For my item images, banners, YouTube thumbnails, merch, and more, I use Canva.com, which is basically the MS Paint of the future on steroids. The best part about Canva is you can do pretty much everything for free. The paid version gives you access to additional fonts, elements, and tools, but nothing essential for success. I chose to spend $120 per year or $10 a month on average. If you want to pay month by month, it'll cost you $14.99. Monthly running total, $50.66. CapCut is another tool I use, and it might be the biggest game changer to my business. It's a video creation app like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere, but instead of needing a computer, you can do everything solely with your phone. I've used this app and only this app for every YouTube video I've made, and I gotta say, they look pretty great. Despite being the most powerful social media app on the App Store, CapCut is free to download and use, and the free version is really all you need to get started. That said, the premium plan is very, very much worth it with an endless access to additional stock footage, templates, transitions, music, export options, and more. In fact, I'm guessing I only use 5% of its full potential. For premium, I pay $7.99 per month. My monthly cost running total, $58.66. Believe it or not, these are all the fixed costs required to run an online business well. You've got a site, an email, a tool for editing the site, and two marketing creation tools. While I spend $58.66 per month on all that, your cost could be reduced quite a bit if you use the free versions of these tools or lesser premium versions. Now, it's important to note there are other fixed costs that could be taken into consideration. Rent, slash mortgage, internet, phone, electricity, and other utilities. These can vary quite a bit, but chances are you already pay for most of these things and you won't need to upgrade them for a while. This video is about my monthly costs though, so I'll give you my numbers and you can plug in your own if you'd like. By the way, it's important to note that I run my online business out of my personal residence, which gives me some serious cost savings that we'll talk about soon. 
For the first two years, we worked out of my basement and had zero intention of leaving that house. Our mortgage was $1,500, but again, we'd be paying that either way, so I'm not gonna count that. This year, we moved into a bigger house, solely for more space for the business. Because we only moved to make room for the business, I'd consider my monthly rent to be $1,000, the difference between my new and old mortgage payment. That calculation is good enough for me. On a side note, for tax time, you can write off a percentage of your house based on your business. Talk to your accountant for that though. Internet is a similar deal. We were paying for 500 gigabits per second for most of my adult life at $65 per month. But when we started pokeyany.com, we upgraded to 1000 gigabits per second, which was a $40 premium. So that $40 is what I consider my monthly cost for the business. Monthly cost running total, $1,098.66. I never upgraded my phone plan, and since I operate out of my residence, water, gas, electric, utilities are pretty much the same as they always have been. I don't factor those into my business. If I was running my business in a separate facility, these utility costs would add quite a bit to my monthly costs. And by the way, just like a mortgage, you can deduct a percentage of these utilities for your business. Talk to your accountant. My monthly running total, still $1,098.66. Unlike utilities, I do have to pay extra for insurance. Home insurance doesn't cover my business. That's because my inventory and supplies belong to my LLC and not to me personally. For my $250,000 policy, I pay just $200 a month. If you have $1,000 or more in your business, I would suggest looking into insuring it. Make sure you get collector's insurance and not typical inventory insurance because Pokemon cards appreciate over time. Collector's insurance will cover how much the cards are worth on the market if destroyed. Typical inventory insurance that typical businesses have will only cover what you paid. I'm not going to recommend an insurance company because I haven't had enough experience with one and I've never made a claim. I swear by Canva, CapCut, Wix, and Google, but I don't swear by my insurance service, so I don't want to recommend it. My monthly cost running total, $1,298.66. Okay, we discussed my fixed monthly costs run my Pokemon card business. Now we're going to talk about my variable monthly costs, and after that, the costs of equipment I have in use. Chapter 2, Variable Costs. Variable costs, as the name suggests, can change month per month, but at my level, they stay relatively consistent. These costs do vary a bit month per month though, depending on my sales revenue and what new sets are out, but I'm gonna total my costs per year and divide by 12 for each month of the year. For example, if I spend $200 on shipping labels in April and $300 for labels in May, my average cost there would be $250 per month. My major variable costs include shipping supplies, boxes, bubble wrap, and tape, shipping labels, and paid advertising. Between boxes, tape, and bubble wrap, I've spent approximately $12,000 this year, which is absolutely bonkers. I buy most of my things on Uline with a few on eBay. Extrapolate that $12,000 out for October and November and December, and that'd be $15,600 in supplies and boxes. November and December will require more supplies and boxes than other months, but we'll keep it simple. Another thing to note, we always keep a couple thousand dollars in boxes and supplies on hand. So while this seems like a general estimate, considering we sell an average of 1,300 orders per month and each high quality corrugated box is one to two dollars depending on sizes, $1,500 per month is a decent enough estimate for the sake of this video. I'll find out the exact number at tax time. Shipping labels are the most significant cost to my business besides cost of goods sold, of course. My customers pay six to $10 per order depending on if they're buying booster boxes or packs and typically the shipping labels for those orders are pretty close to what they pay. Sometimes I make a couple bucks, sometimes I lose a couple bucks. The shipping costs they pay counts as income on my balance sheet. So for the year January through September, I've spent a total of $80,000. Assuming October is roughly the same amount and I sell a good chunk more in November and December, I'd estimate my average shipping costs to be over $9,000. At this point, we'll just say the total monthly costs are $12,000. My only other significant variable costs would be paid advertising. This includes Facebook ads, Google ads, and affiliate program commission. If you're just starting out, paid advertising is not something I would recommend. We didn't spend a single cent to advertising until we hit 100K of revenue, and even then we only spent about $200 a month. 100K is not a magical number by any means, but it marked the time in our business where we had a good enough suppliers and we could start to scale. And that would be the logical time to start, when you have consistent inventory and consistent access to it. 
when there's really no chance that your website will run out of stock. That's when I'd start running paid ads. Until you get to that point, take advantage of the free organic growth and power of social media. We made 10 to 12 TikToks a day starting out, and then we laid off the gas and made two to three TikToks per day. That's all we did to hit 100K in sales, and we still go pretty hard on TikTok and lately on YouTube. Advertising is a variable cost, and we do up it and down it depending on the sets. For example, on 151 and Beastar Universe, we upped advertising quite a bit, but we ease off with less hype sets like Raging Surf and Ruler of the Black Flame. Typically, we spend about $1,500 a month on Facebook and Instagram ads and $1,500 to $2,000 a month on affiliate commission. It's important to note I didn't set my affiliate program up as well as I could have and ROI has not been ideal there. I can talk about affiliate links and affiliate promo codes in a separate video, but for the sake of this video, we're going to call the average advertising cost per month at around $3,500 total. Import fees are a big question people ask me about since we specialize in Japanese and Korean products. Now, I'm supposed to scare you about the high price of import fees so you buy from my site, but in all honesty, it's not so bad depending on your supplier. That said, if you're buying one item at a time from an official site like Plaza Japan, you might get hit by some relatively high import fees. I'd imagine like 20 to 40 bucks. That might be wrong, I'm not sure. Um, I spend only $300 a month on average, which is really nothing compared to how much I import. Um, basically, Japanese suppliers avoid import fees by shipping out large orders and a bunch of small parcels, which they claim as $2,000 or under in value. Sometimes that's accurate, and other times the boxes are worth quite a bit more than that, and uh, claiming them at $2,000 just reduces or zeroes out import fees. I'm guessing they might be able to legally get away with this because typically MSRP of these sets is way lower than market price, but ultimately it's probably a bit risky when it comes to insuring the package, and it might be a bit of a gray area um, depending on how import laws work. I'm really not sure. Quite frankly, I don't care though. My Japanese suppliers cover me if something gets lost or damaged, and if they're doing something in the gray area, that's their problem, not mine. So right, wrong, legit, illegal, safe or not safe, overall, import fees are negligible on my end, and I'll let any risks and insurance and the law be Japan's problem. If you haven't noticed by now, I really don't sugarcoat anything, I'm pretty real when it comes to uh, telling you guys how it works. Wire transfer fees are another thing that's essentially required when buying internationally, we use WISE, W-I-S-E, which is one of the industry standard tools for international wire transfers. Basically, WISE serves as a middleman between me and Japan. My Japanese sellers have an account, and I have an account. When I want to send money to Japan, I actually send it to WISE, which is a US-based company, by the way. WISE takes a cut and sends the remaining balance to Japan, so ultimately the cut comes out of Japan's end and not mine. The stupid part is, there is a limit per transfer of 1 million yen, which is around $7,000-ish. Meaning if I get an invoice for 25k, I need to make 4 separate wire transfers for that one invoice, 1 million yen at a time. The process for wire transfers involves setting up a transfer on the WISE app, calling my bank and giving them the WISE account number and routing number, and making that request 1 million yen at a time until my invoice is paid. As I stated before, WISE takes a chunk of what I send them, but that ultimately costs Japan the fee. However, I have to pay a fee to my bank, and that fee is $25 per transfer, or $100 for the four total transfers in my $25,000 invoice example. Now, I'll give you a tip that will save you thousands of dollars a year, and a tip that I wish I would have used from the beginning. WISE actually has a sort of bank account function that allows you to send money to your WISE account and use the WISE account to store it. So instead of calling your bank for every single transfer, you can make one large transfer to your WISE bank account and then send money to Japan via that. When your WISE bank account, air quotes, runs low on funds, you call your bank and make another transfer. This costs the typical $25, but you only need to pay that once every time you want to fill up your account. I fill my WISE account with about $50,000 per week, depending on the month and the sets that are out. And I do this four times per month, which costs me four $25 fees, or $100 per month. This varies a bit, again, depending on the new set, but I'll figure out that exact number at tax time. This video is just a general snapshot, in case you haven't been able to tell. Total monthly costs will round up to $16,000-ish. While I'm surely missing some minor things here and there, that's a pretty good summary of our variable costs. 
Back when we streamed on Twitch, I would have added in top loaders and sleeves, and back when we did weekly pop-up shops at the mall, I would have added in kiosk leasing fees and some other costs around my table. I also attended a few Collecticons this year, but it's really not worth calculating those fees into the video. Cost of goods sold would be the biggest cost I spend per month, but it varies quite a bit, and because we keep growing, I keep buying more and more inventory. Also, I put aside a lot of inventory in the back of my basement, uh, assuming it'll appreciate over time. And with that comes inventory tax versus cost of goods sold tax. It gets quite confusing. Um, I don't think it's really helpful for you going through all that because quite frankly, my accountant helps me out with it. But for the sake of your knowledge, we sell between 300 and 350,000 a month, depending on the sets that are out. When Japanese 151 came out, we did two $400,000 months in a row, which was pretty wild. Um, and I estimate that 300 to 350k number to be doubled around November and December. Holiday season gets pretty crazy. We'll see. Equally unhelpful but potentially interesting information for you would be the cost of equipment and major supplies I've bought for the business. I won't go too crazy on this part because we've already got quite a long video and I'm not trying to ramble on too long. So here's a rapid fire list. Packing tables, $1,400 from Uline. Shelving, $2,700 from Lowe's. Computer, $4,000, I built it. Two laptops from Best Buy, $2,000 total. Two iPads, $800 total, Best Buy. Two Rolo label printers, $130 each from Amazon. My secret lab chair, $600 from Secret Lab. Monitor, $600 from Best Buy. The desks were from Ikea, and they were about $500 total. Streaming lights and stream deck from Best Buy, $260 and $130. My gaming mouse and very, very overpriced keyboard, $300. I got my car wrap designed and wrapped by Revolution Wraps here in Omaha, Nebraska, and that was $2,400 total. And there's probably a bunch of stuff I'm missing. We'll call that about $1,000. So around $17,000, give or take. Add that to my on-hand inventory of 240 k ish and you've got a big chunk of money. And there you have it, a relatively accurate idea of what I spend per month on my seven-figure online Pokemon card business. If you want to start your own Pokemon card business, I have a business playlist on my channel, and I never hide anything behind a paywall, and it's probably better than any college course you've taken. I'm very open with everything. And by the way, if the numbers I talked about in this video seem overwhelming, keep in mind that we started in a 10x10 bedroom with two $40 plastic shelves from Walmart, and a brother printer that we cut labels out of with scissors. You start small, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're looking to starting a brick and mortar card business, there are a lot more costs, risks, and general pains involved. I'd suggest watching Mason with Cardinal Gaming, Rudy with Alpha Investments, or Rob with RNG Games. Uh, they're all YouTubers with brick and mortar experience, and I'd say they're about as legit and transparent as I am. Check them out. Uh, like, comment, and please subscribe for the algorithm. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, and arbitrary vanity metrics like that give my life value and meaning. Also, buy my stuff at pokeyenny.com. Money makes me happy. Thanks for watching.